You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. So has the war on Christmas begun? Has the war on religion begun? Is this a Christian state? What is what is going on? Why don't... Is it possible that we could return to the religion of the founders? And here I'm talking about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin, the deists who saw divinity in everything and perhaps saved the planet. Scott Wheeler is with us. He's with the National Republican Trust, National Republican Trust dot com scott welcome to the show hey great to be with you tom uh you have some concerns about the uh the the so-called war on christmas well i i think everyone really should have concerns because when you think about it um no religion is as much of a faith as any religion is and um when you when you uh look at this this firm belief in nothing it's as much as a belief as, a, as anything else well, I don't disagree with you I, I I believe that atheism is a religion but that's not you know that's not the point uh, the, that I asked you about you're it sounds to me like what you are what you guys are upset about is that you want to commercialize religion you want you want companies to be out there saying Merry Christmas you get offended when people say Happy Holidays something like that you want people to be saying Merry Christmas or, or am I misunderstanding your information no, no I would say that um, it's, it's not about commercializing Christmas it's about uh, having the, the freedom or feeling free to you know to say Merry Christmas to have a business feel like they can say Merry Christmas at the holiday season to avoid, uh, you know, without the concern that they're going to be picketed or that they're going to be sued or, you know, that uh, someone's going to, to make a big deal. I, I, I've had the, the benefit of, of having uh, two religions in my life, uh, Judaism and Christianity as an adult, and uh, I, I, I never felt offended when someone said Merry Christmas to me before I was a Christian. And I, I am equally unoffended when when uh, someone uh, gives me a, a, a Shabbat Shalom or, or gives me a, a Hanukkah gift uh, now that I'm a Christian. So, 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 think, so Scott, you know, we're talking with Scott Wheeler, the National Republican Trust, uh, nationalrepublicantrust.com. I, you know, I don't get it. The, the, the First Amendment uh, does not... Uh, prevent or promote commercial speech. It prevents the government from limiting speech. Are you looking for a big government solution here? Do you want the government to come in and say, you must say, if you run Sears Roebuck, you must say Merry Christmas? Um, no, 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 absolutely not. But I think that they also, at the same time, should be at liberty to to say it if they want to. Well, who's and stopping them? Well, I think Pete, I think there's a uh, a whole bunch of troublemakers out there who who are uh, making an issue of it, trying to remove uh, God from from money and God from any possible. And you know that you you spoke of the First Amendment, which clearly says that Congress shall pass no law restricting free exercise of religion. And yet, no, actually, it says uh, Congress shall pass no law establishing a religion. Establish, uh, re, establishing a religion or the free exercise thereof. Or the free exercise thereof, yeah. Um, and, and, but the, and so it, it is a matter of, of uh, you know, I, I had this discussion not long ago with someone about uh, they were afraid that Republicans would force people to carry Bibles to school. And I said, well, what would make you say that? I said, I think the Republican position is that everyone ought to be free to be able to take a Bible to school because you can't right now. But by choice. You, certainly you can. There's no law against taking a Bible to school, Scott. Oh, There's no law against get... praying in school. And you know oh, it. There is, too. Well, there, there isn't. What the Supreme Court ruled finding, was that a and... school cannot force students to listen to or participate in a particular prayer with regard to a particular religion. They can have a moment of silence, and they can pray however they want to whatever god they want, or gods, uh, whatever. But, you know, I, I, I just... 
you know, I, I, this this whole thing baffles me. You know, Santa Claus, for example. You know, I, uh, speaking as somebody who grew up a Christian, Santa Claus, the story of Santa Claus is a pagan story. The Christmas tree is a pagan thing. You know, back, you know, in 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 Northern Europe, back two thousand years ago, when they were afraid that the that the sun was going to extinguish on December twenty third, fourth, fifth. You know, at the at the winter solstice, um, right. the, the the priest would go up on the highest uh, uh, mountaintop and find a big pine tree that. That had lots of you know uh, flammable uh, oil in it. Light the thing on fire, say a prayer, and and say I'm going to reignite the sun. And the next day, the sun, the day would be a little bit longer, and then a little longer, and then a little longer, and everybody would go, he did it again. This is a pagan holiday. This is a pagan ritual. Why do you want to? Why do you want you know businesses out there promoting paganism? I don't get it. It seems to me like the you know the the Anabaptists, uh, the the and and the um, who are the Watchtower folks? The um, That's uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, you know, they've got a right. They say, you know, we don't want any Christmas decorations. We got, we want nothing to do with this pagan holiday. Well, I, first of all, I, it, yes, absolutely. And your your historical facts about Christmas are are correct about the the paganism associated with it. But I, as as a as a, a I I I believe that. Um, I, I believe that um, uh, you, you know there's never a bad day to thank, give thanks to to the Almighty for the the many blessings. But and, with and, money, I mean, Jesus threw the people out, he threw the money changers out of the temple. He was, you know, his his message was poverty. You know, a rich man won't get through it. It's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle. And 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 here you are advocating that the religion but, of a of a poor man who never owned anything and who and who openly advocated poverty should be promoted by profit. But but Tom, the the message of of Yeshua, the the Messiah, was that you can't live by these rules, and therefore I must by die. what rules. To absorb, by the the rule of law which he was bringing, he Jesus was a was a a, you a rabbi. His, he, you who, know, he said, "I came not to change the law, but to fulfill it." You know, and, and right, but he his message was, "You cannot. There's not one honest man among you. You cannot keep the law. So quit pretending that you can. Uh, quit pretending uh, like you know. Come on, Scott." That's exact. Why did he? Die? He also he also said any person who breaks any one of these commandments is is as guilty as if he broke all ten of them. Uh, you know, I don't want to argue religion here with you, Scott, but I can. Right, but, um, you, but you just baited me into this argument. Let me make the point that is that, that the whole message of Yeshua was, and his and his death was, I'm dying for all your sins because you can't save yourself. You can't abide by the law. Okay, so his message was not go out and buy stuff, and by the way, have your merchants, even if they happen to be Hindus. Or Jews or 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 atheists say Merry Christmas. Uh, I I think that again it's it's uh, it is a war of vapidness that is saying don't say Merry Christmas. It's not a, any law, and it's and I how is it any less a war of vapidness to say you must say Merry Christmas? They're being intimidated by these by by these people who are anti. Religion and who are who are uh, anti uh, deist of, at all, which also happens to be a belief and a faith. If you I don't, would, you know, what's and, wrong with being respectful, Scott? If if there are some, you know, if 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 there is somebody who is not Christian and they're offended by uh, by Merry Christmas, what's wrong with saying Happy Holidays? What's well, I, I don't think, wrong look, with that? I, I don't say I don't say Merry Christmas to people that I know are Jewish. Uh, that's not the point. Uh, but when I was Jewish, no, it did not bother me at all in the least. I it never. And I you're contradicting and, yourself. No, I'm not. I'm I'm saying I don't intentionally say Merry Christmas to someone who is Jewish. But I went through uh, parts. But of you my want life. merchants to. No, I'm saying if they want to, they should, and they shouldn't be intimidated out of it. Okay. They shouldn't be mocked and made fun of for doing. Okay. Well, you know, I I, I guess on that point, we'll. Uh, it, it's hard to disagree with not mocking people, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> NationalRepublicanTrust dot com. The website Scott Wheeler. Thanks, Scott. Hey, good to be with you. Tom. Good talking to you. This is the Tom. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, there's it's this whole spectrum of stuff that that I think in 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 so many ways, whether it's the it's the commercialization of religion, whether it's the the um, 
the promotion of religion, the aggressive promotion of religion, the aggressive promotion of atheism, the aggressive promotion of secularism, the, you know, fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. As long as all these different things find themselves separated and divorced from the idea that the entire planet is alive, we're screwed. And I think that these these debates, these battles that we're having um, around the edges are are so often missing that fact. You know, there's one guy who has actually brought a modern version of of de- of of deism or really of animism into the public discourse in a scientific way. That's James Lovelock. James Lovelock came along. He wrote this book about Gaia, the Gaia hypothesis. I, I think that that was the title of the book. The Gaia Hypothesis was the essence of it, in which he said, the planet is a living thing. And and here we are talking, you know, the planet is a living thing. And, and, and if we don't get that, I think we're going to have a really, really serious problem. Uh, Roy Speckhardt is with us. He is the executive director of the American Humanist Association, AmericanHumanist.org. Hey, Roy, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me on. Thanks for joining us. You guys are uh, running an evangelical campaign, as far as I can tell. You know, uh, give us your slogan. No God, no problem. Okay. Uh, why not no gods? Well... Most folks in the United States think of it in a singular kind of way, although you're right. The diversity that we have here indicates that uh, a god or gods would be more appropriate in some ways. Yeah, well, it it seems to me that that the debate that that we're having um, with uh, the National Republican Trust, we were just talking to Scott Wheeler, and he's all upset that, you know, people aren't saying Merry Christmas in the stores and and you on the other hand are saying hey why you know why should you worry about religion it seems to me that if we don't figure out a way to reinject the sacred and by that i'm not talking about religion i'm absolutely not talking about religion but if we don't figure out a way to reinject that carl sagan notion of the Oh my God! Look at it all. The James Lovelock Gaia hypothesis, the sacred, back into our dialogues. We're going to destroy this Earth. I mean, we're we're killing this planet. We, you know, ninety percent of the giant fish are gone. The coral reefs are bleaching away. The 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 sea level is going up. We're we're in the midst of the sixth largest, the sixth extinction in the history of the planet, and and full bore into it, and and as. By rejecting, you know, I, I, you know, it's fine with me if you want to reject a particular god, but are you guys rejecting altogether any sense of spirituality? Well, uh, humanists and atheists uh, and other skeptics see that there isn't evidence for believing things based on faith alone. Uh, that there should, should be testable information out there if we want to hold our um, ground to it. Now, of course, the stuff you're talking about now, about um, global warming and the effects that it's having on the planet, and these are very testable things. And sure, I think humanists should be right behind that. Yeah, I mean, you, you want something testable. I, you know, if I take my car apart in my driveway and then put it back together, I can turn the key and it'll start, assuming that I read the right manual these days. <laughs> but if I take a cow apart in my driveway and then put her back together and sew her back up, she's not going to move. Um, there is something unique about life, is there not? Unique, sure. Yeah, I think that um, we have to be cognizant of that and um, have respect for life, and especially human life. Absolutely. Why especially human life? How How is our life any different from all the other life? I mean, you know, if, if the rest of life on this planet were to vanish, we right. would not be here. Oh, it's true. We're, there's certainly an interconnectedness there, and we have to know that Everything we do has an effect, um, and it's going to impact us down the road as well. Um, absolutely. So, so, Roy Speckhardt with the American Humanist Association, AmericanHumanists or Humanist dot org. Why not instead of attacking God, monotheism, basically, uh-huh. why not promote deism or animism? 
Well, we're not attacking God, for starters. Um, the idea, no God, no problem, is simply that, th- that you don't need to have a God um, in order to find the solutions. What solutions? Um, to all the problems that we have today, whether it's environment, economy, um, issues around um, morality and things like that. The answers aren't all to be found in religion. A lot of them are to be found right before us. Yeah, but uh, but and 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 if you want to talk in the singular God and you want to talk in monotheistic terms, I don't disagree with you. Uh, uh, but if we don't reclaim our sense of awe at the the broad, extraordinary nature of this planet, we're going to con- if we continue down the Cartesian worldview path. If we continue the Aristotelian, you know, atomistic, it's all a machine, if we can just find the levers, if we keep thinking like that, we're going to kill ourselves. We're going to kill this planet. That's that's one view. I think that um, the idea that I, I, we should cultivate an awe and a sense of um, amazement at the beauty of nature is perfectly reasonable. I, I, think, I feel that way when I go out and do hiking and things like that. I don't think that it's something that um, th- that we have to have some reverence for something g- greater than all of us. I don't think there's anything transformational beyond what we have here today. Okay. All right, Roy Speckhart, uh, interesting conversation, and you can read all about it over at AmericanHumanist.org. Uh, Roy, uh, how's the campaign going, by the way? Oh, it's great. We're getting a lot of action and a lot of folks out there who hadn't who thought they were alone and that they were the only ones who felt like that are realizing that they aren't. That's great. Roy Speckhart, AmericanHumanist.org. Thanks, Roy.